so PNH is a rare disease uh, that originates in the bone marrow. So patients with PNH have a, you know, a, a disruption in the bone marrow that leads to them having this disease. Um, it's a disease that in the US affects approximately 5,000 people. Um, and it is a disease where the, the bone marrow change that uh, is involved is one where the stem cells in the bone marrow, for multiple reasons that are genetic in nature, uh, and with genetic, I want to you know, clarify, not that you're necessarily born with it, um, but in this particular case, a mutation that is acquired during life, and that gives rise to stem cells in the bone marrow that create abnormal uh, red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. Uh, and for the sake of this discussion, we'll focus on the red blood cells, because what this mutation does is it makes these red blood cells susceptible to complement attack. And what is complement? So complement is, is a very old part of our immune system. And the best way to think about it is uh, these proteins that are in circulation and that you should most easily think of like paint. And what I mean with paint is complement wants to paint all the cells in our body. And why does it do that? Because it allows our body to know which cells are incapable of cleaning up the paint. It's what we call an ancient form of immune surveillance. Um, and cells that are not able to clean up the paint from their surface are recognized by mononuclear cells like macrophages and phagocytosed and removed. Now, with a PNH red blood cell, what we call the complement controlling proteins that are normally naturally expressed on the surface of these red blood cells are no longer present. So that means when the paint gets deposited on these cells, it accumulates very quickly in an enzymatic fashion. And when it does that, it starts leading to the activation of what we call C5, and then the formation of the so-called membrane attack complex. And when that happens, these red blood cells explode inside the bloodstream through intravascular hemolysis. Uh, and through that process, you get, of course, first of all, a spike in an enzyme called LDH, but then secondarily, all of the consequences of exploding red blood cells, intravascular hemolysis uh, that, are, that we know of, uh, being thrombotic events, anemia, transfusion dependency, kidney damage, pulmonary hypertension, uh, to name some of kind of the side effects of this phenomenon. Now, approximately 15 years ago, uh, a drug came on the market that was a life-saving drug and is a life-saving drug for patients with PNH. And this drug is called Soliris. Now, more recently, a new drug has been introduced called Ultomiris. And Ultomiris uses the exact same mechanism as Soliris, but allows patients to be dosed with an intravenous product, so, you know, through an, an, an infusion in the body, uh, every eight weeks with Ultomiris instead of every two weeks, which was the case with Soliris. Now, this is a life-saving drug that targets one of the complement factors called C5. And by doing that, these drugs are very efficient at blocking the formation of the membrane attack complex and preventing these red blood cells from exploding in the vasculature. So that's really the mechanism by which this, this very important therapy came into the world. What Soliris or Ultomiris do not do, and this is where kind of hopefully our contribution will be important to these patients, is that it does not prevent still the accumulation of the paint, this C3 product, which is upstream. It basically prevents the final you know, lethal event but it does not prevent the accumulation of that C3 product on the cell surface. And that means that these red blood cells, when they go through the liver and the spleen, they get removed from circulation much more quickly than they otherwise would. And the consequence of all of this is that even if you are on a treatment with Soliris or Ultomiris, for example, your life has been saved, but your red blood cells still do not live long enough. And the way to compensate for that is to make as many red blood cells as you can in your bone marrow in an effort to you know, still you know, make up for what is going on through this process that we call extravascular hemolysis. But nonetheless, about a third of patients continue to be transfusion dependent, about a third of patients continue to be anemic or severely anemic, and only one third of patients will end up in more normal hemoglobin level ranges but at the expense, again, of that maximum output from the bone marrow. So with our drug called Pixita, what we did is we said, look, 
we believe that by going upstream in the cascade, we will be able not just to prevent the cells from exploding, but also allow them to float around without accumulating that paint. And so by targeting intra as well as extravascular hemolysis, we believe that we will have patients with much better hemoglobin levels, transfusion free, uh, et cetera, and just uh, be able to provide them with a much better quality of life.